Welcome everybody to another episode of Code Talk. This week, I'm your I'm your host, Thomas Young. Uh, happy to be stepping in as many of us on the Developer Advocates team will be taking turns hosting the Code Talk program as we expand it this year. Really excited to have a long time and, and great community uh, contributor here with us today, Lars. Um, Want to introduce yourself just a little bit, and and for those of you in the audience that might not uh, know you, uh, I, I don't know what that would be in the SAP world. Maybe somebody that doesn't work in ABOP and has never looked at open source, but uh, maybe uh, maybe just introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on board. Uh, my name is Nas. Um, I have been doing custom ABOP development for around twenty years. Um, I live here in uh, sunny or uh, snowy Copenhagen, Denmark, um, um, trying to uh, do a bit of up up uh, here and there. And I think in round 10 years ago, actually, yeah, this summer, exactly 10 years ago is um, is 10 years ago that I started the up up Git uh, open source project that is a Git client for up up written in up up. Uh, because I do like to write everything in ABAP because, of course, ABAP is the most interesting uh, programming language that there is because it's so big and keeps expanding. So SAP is doing a very good job of uh, just adding adding more stuff into uh, um, into uh, into ABAP and like every week there's a new uh, new feature, right? So uh, so this week. Uh, uh, is the feature in uh, delete from table? It needs to know the mandant, so the client number, right? The, okay. Yeah. And then it's just like, oh, everything else is uh, it, it, it figures out the client number by itself, but in this specific scenario, it doesn't, right? And yeah, twenty years in, there's all still some uh, some new stuff to learn. Um, yeah, and also have a lot of other um, open source projects. I have uh, out of open checks that start around. Eight years ago, there's stuff for Code Inspector. Then I have a, a, a static analysis of a Blint project. Uh, I have other projects. I have a project that lists projects. <laughs> so, yes. uh, so you can go to .abap.org to, uh, to find a lot of um, open source uh, projects. Uh, click the link above or, or below <laughs> yeah. uh, for, um, <laughs> for that, Brian. Then... Yeah. Anything well, that's a lot. I, I'm sure there's, uh, well, there's stuff you do for VS Code and ABOP and VS Code. And yeah, yeah. And I've seen you've been playing around with uh, uh, the AI code assistance and, and stuff there, but maybe that's coming in a later question. So I won't give anything away. <laughs> um, um, but, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot of your personal time spent on these open source projects. Um, yeah. And, you know, as I'm sure the community wants to know, you know, what motivates you? to do that contribution because it's time away from your personal life, family, you know, whatever. Uh, but, um, yeah, what, what, what keeps you contributing and, and causes you to, uh, to do all that. Yeah. So if we talk about open source, right, I'm like, um, if I do some code and it's not, uh, specific for a company business process, then I might be lost. So Git is not something that I invented, it exists. It's yeah. making making a Git client is not a novel idea. It's just something that somebody needs to do. And uh, and I started it and uh, also has gotten a lot of help, right, uh, over the years. Uh, I hope you have you have Mark in another episode. I hope. Yep, coming uh, up. Mm -hmm. Coming up. Uh, but yeah, doing open source is not the smartest as such, right? There's been a lot of talk uh, on the internet around the uh, sustainability of open source right and thanks to my uh, sponsors on github i have uh, just a few sponsors so uh, i can buy a coffee every now and then <laughs> um but but yeah open it. and i think that has changed a lot over the years in the beginning it was like get some code out there it's fun people can see it right uh, I think nowadays I keep myself motivated by saying that what I do is something I do for myself, yeah. which is uh, very, uh, very much different than the whole idea about sharing 
Um, because I, I need to say that I do some of it for myself uh, to because it's tooling that I need to use and I like to use. So I define how I like to do my development in what tooling and if there's something missing, then I fix it right. Yeah. Um, there is, and that also gets to kind of the next point, right? So of course I have a lot of open source projects and I don't have the time to support everything. <laughs> so sometimes people create issues, but sometimes I have to say, well, <laughs> yeah, you're on your own. It's fine. You can fix it if you like. If you don't like to fix it, that's also fine. And I also have a lot of projects that I've just, yeah, I actually have empty projects that were just put in the name and then then uh, never really started it. Yeah. I also had other projects that, you know, th this was a fun test, but I don't use it anymore. I don't recommend it. So, and now it exists uh, because something exists in open source doesn't require anyone to use it, right? So it's sure. always the choice of the user to determine is this something that works for me or is not something that works for me or or is it exactly this small special case where it actually makes a lot of sense and I cannot do anything else uh, uh, in this specific scenario? Well, even even if it is just you sharing the stuff you would have built yourself, I have to say you must be a pretty prolific in in that regard of of tools you build for yourself because I don't know too many other people that that build as much stuff uh, like that tooling and and tooling adjacent things as as what you do. I don't think the average developer is is creating near as much of that. So um, I, I think you stand out in the community from from that regard. Yeah, everybody's got a percent. yeah, everybody's got a little utility tucked away here and there, and, and it would be it would be great if more people did share those. Uh, yeah, you know. And I also also recommend sharing. So we did talk about some of my empty projects or half finished projects. So putting stuff on the internet uh, doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have yeah. to work. Uh, just instead of tugging it away in a corner and or deleting it in ten years, just put it on the internet. Uh, perhaps it's a very small scenario and very special case, but there might just be one person out there yeah. that can actually use it for something. Uh, for something, you never good. know. And maybe you don't have time to finish it, but maybe someone else does. You know, yeah. and that it goes on to live. Yeah, that's 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 some of the main ideas of open source. Yeah, that's great. So maybe moving on from open source, your contributions, you know, I'd like to know, you know, what's new coming this year that's got you excited as a developer and it doesn't have to necessarily be in the SAP space. You know, there's a lot going on out there. Like we said, with AI and new hardware, you know, like the Apple vision stuff coming, you know, so what, what gets Lars excited? Not very much. <laughs> I, I see myself as being old school, right? So I yeah. like to to use technologies that I know how it works and how it doesn't work right. Uh, and yet choosing to get into a new technology is always a kind of a choice. So do I see this working uh, uh, also working in 10 years, right? So yeah. with, with the Linta, uh, I started writing that in, uh, in TypeScript around six years ago or something because I thought, oh, TypeScript, that's pretty cool. That's something I can use. And since I started writing TypeScript on the side, right, I've seen more and more usage of TypeScript yeah. uh, uh, over the last few years. So so that was a good investment, right? But it's always investments getting into new technologies that you need to consider because ABAP takes a lot of mental space to, uh, to comprehend, right? Yeah. Um, and of course, the generative AI, yeah. Um, but from my perspective, it's fine. Uh, but we have had it running in VS Code for two or three years now. Uh, I am using it every day, but I just see it like like a a, a, a type of edit completion thing. So it's very good when uh, working in VS Code, writing your ABAP code, and then it's very good at guessing. So yeah. it. This morning, I was adding three methods to a class, add warning, add success, uh, add error. And it was very good at making those uh, three methods for me, uh, increasing uh, 
a variable by one every time that the uh, uh, the method was called. There's also very very simple code, but I didn't have to type it into the yeah, keyboard. Okay. I could just wait a bit and then uh, then it just oh let just let's just try this and it's, and I think it's very good for getting a suggestion, something to work from if you don't really know one. But of course, you need to take a look at it. Uh, sure. So yeah, not very much is uh, what. Uh, not, not much to say that. No new programming languages that you're learning this year. I know it's the start of the calendar year. A lot of people like choose to take on a new programming language. Yeah. yeah. So I have ABAP, right? And typically, okay. you say that when I when I stop uh, making ABAP, then I'll then I'll uh, go into uh, PL one or APO. Okay. Yeah, uh, so for those that uh, don't know those languages, those languages are actually, I'm pretty sure, older than ABAP uh, <laughs> yeah. and and a bit more crazy. Uh, yeah. um, but that's also what kind of makes it fun, right? So it, yeah. it doesn't have to be all JavaScript or something, but try some of the old things because some of the old things actually, actually also works and it was pretty okay back then right uh, now we just keep yeah. reinventing the same thing over and over again like how to make a web page right yeah. server-side rendering is something new yeah. right yeah. i was doing that in the 90s with yeah. uh, with php um, yeah some so, of us have lived in the industry long enough to have seen trends come go and come back again and yeah that's one of them isn't it yeah <laughs> well what about your own secret projects that you might be working on currently what's your next big thing that you've got uh cooking up anything you want to share with the community yeah so i don't really have much secret things right so <laughs> well it might be secret because my commit history is long so it, it's difficult to find a to find the secret projects in that list um but recently i have started work on a uh a 2020 dev topa fest entry Okay. Yep. So uh, uh, back then, I was I had the crazy idea to uh, start writing a WebAssembly interpreter slash virtual machine in ABAP. Mm hmm. I remember uh, that entry. Yeah, yeah, that was that was really cool, and uh, it got Fibonacci running back then. So that, that was that was nice. Uh, but I actually started implementing all of it. Uh, now I just kind of wonder if I'll finish, and it will probably run very slow, but it will also open some possibilities in the world, right? So taking yep. some code um, that is JavaScript or Rust or C++, taking that, compiling to a web assembly, putting that into the ABAP stack and running that code uh, on the ABAP stack, even though that's not ABAP, but it's executed via a web assembly virtual machine. Um, again, it will probably not be very fast. And yeah, I was counting the error and successes in the test cases. Um, and there is like, there is 50,000 errors and warnings that I need to get fixed. Uh, I have a thousand running. So yeah, um, yeah that's like 2% oh. done. Yeah, well, it's well on its way then. Yeah. yeah. But luckily, so to write up, up, you don't need to know the full language and probably to get something running in WebAssembly, you don't need 100%. Yeah. Uh, it just has to be good enough to execute the, the tests of, um, of, of, a, of a different project that you want to use. Yeah. Well, that sounds very exciting. I can't wait to see, see that running and maybe, uh, maybe have it ready for, uh, Dev Toberfest in the uh, in the second half of, of this year, you'll you can yeah. enter it in in some aspect of Dev Toberfest this year. We'll have to keep in mind. I also have to keep in mind the anniversary of Abba Git. We'll have to find some way to uh, to celebrate that because uh, that's pretty monumental for for the uh, for the Abba open source community. Certainly, it's a big deal. But uh, but with that. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us today. It was great to get uh, get insights into who you are, Lars. Share a little bit of, uh, uh, and that's what we want to do with the Code Talks is is share with the community some of the some of the people that are active behind the scenes in the community or or out in front in the community, and and just to hear a little bit about their thoughts on on a few topics. And uh, look forward to hopefully having you back in a in a future episode as well. Sure. sure. So thanks a lot, and. Uh, 
Stay tuned for another episode of Code Talk coming soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.